Hi everybody and welcome to my kitchen. Hey, who let you in here? Hi everybody, I'm Manny from Manny's Made at Home. And I'm Michael from my channel. Michael. We're coming together to do a collaboration to help celebrate 4th of July. We'll each be making some colorful red, white, and blue 4th of July recipes on our channels. When you're finished with our video, be sure to go over to Michael's channel and check out his amazing recipes. He's got some extremely creative things and beautiful videography. With that, let's get started. The full list of ingredients will be in the description below. We have quite a few bits to get done today, so let's do a little bit of prep first. First step, preheat your oven to 150 degrees Celsius. Next, I'm gonna get my cake strips ready. I have a bowl of water here and I'm just gonna get my cake strips and I'm gonna dip them in and then just let them sit there until you are ready to use them. Okay, with my cake strips soaking, I'm gonna prep my pans. Normally I just like to butter and flour them, but because we've so much going on, I wanna make sure that we don't have any hiccups or anything like that, so I'm also gonna use some parchment paper today as well. Still make sure you flour, you <laughs> butter them really well. I like to use cold butter for this as well, because then I use less and it's less messy. I'm gonna take a round of parchment paper, which I've cut already, place it in the bottom, and I'm gonna butter again. There is no way this cake is gonna stick. Finally, I'm gonna toss in about a tablespoon of flour and move that around the pan to coast everywhere. And then you can dip out the excess flour into your next pan and continue doing that until they're all ready. Next, I wanna separate some eggs. My normal sponge cake recipe uses whole eggs, but because I'm gonna be using some food coloring today, and I want it to really come through, by removing the egg yolk, I will end up with a nice pale sponge, um, and that will help the color to come through. Okay, next I wanna save my dry ingredients. So I've got my flour, and I've got baking powder and baking soda. Save that through but I am gonna go in with a whisk and just give it a bit of an extra whisk. All right, so that's ready. So next let's go and cream our butter. Let's get our butter into the bowl and I'm gonna use an electric hand whisk for this. And I wanna whip this up for two to three minutes until it gets nice and pale and fluffy. So now I'm gonna add in my sugar but you want to do it a little bit at a time. Whisk that in slowly until it becomes incorporated and then continue adding more. With my sugar all mixed in, I'm gonna go in with a spatula as well and just scrape down the bottom to make sure that there's no clumps of sugar kind of stuck anywhere. Next, I'm gonna add in my egg whites. Um, I'm gonna mix them in at a low to medium speed and try to add them in a little bit at a time. And after each addition, give it a, a chance to incorporate into the mixture as well. Okay, we're almost at the home stretch now, at least when it comes to the sponges. Um, I've got my milk here and I also need to flavor my cake a little bit so I'm gonna use some good quality vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is dark. Um, I don't want to make my butter too dark. If you had some almond extract or even lemon which is clear, uh, you can use that instead. I'm gonna add in my dry and wet ingredients in an alternating manner. Start with adding flour first and then ending with flour as well. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna eyeball this. Just add about a third. Because I wanna retain as much air as possible, I'm actually gonna do this part by hand. And then add in half your liquid. <gasps> I forgot the most important thing, the vinegar. This is gonna react with the baking soda and give us the rice. So I'm gonna add that in here. And even though I'm using a whisk, I'm kinda of trying to almost do a folding motion to incorporate this and maintain as much of the air as I can. And with all my panning, I also forgot to add the yogurt. I'm having a great day today. So put that in now quickly and mix it in. Ideally, I would have mixed that in with my milk and vanilla extract. Okay, and then the last of my flour. And fold it in. You can see this batter is actually kind of thick. And that's because of all the air that we added into it. Um, because I'm doing different colored cakes, um, I need to split the batter up a little bit before I add the color in. Half of it is gonna be used for a red cake and then I need a quarter for a white cake and the other quarter is gonna be blue. I've weighed my batter and I pre-weighed my bowl as well. So I know how much batter I have and divide that by four so I know how, how much batter I need for each um, different color sponge cake. According to my calculations, I need 303 grams per portion. One is white, leave that as it is. Now I'm gonna add in one to two tablespoons of my food coloring 
I'm gonna mix it in, trying to fold, have a look at what my batter looks like, assess where I feel I need more. But you wanna make sure that your food learning is well mixed in. But this one definitely needs more, so I'm gonna go in with an extra tablespoon. You have to bear in mind as well not to overdo it. I'm using liquid food coloring, so that may change the consistency of your batter as well. Sometimes using a gel uh, food coloring is better. For the red one, I'm gonna add one and a half tablespoons of my red food color. This probably will give me a bit of a pink color instead. So to help uh, with the color, I'm gonna add some cocoa powder. And again, mix that through. Okay, into our tint. Add in your butter and spread it around. I like to spin it a bit to get the butter evenly around the edges. We didn't add any extra liquid to the white one, the consistency might be a little bit different, but it should still bake up the same. Finally, let's do the rest. Put on your cake strips and into the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. My cakes are just ready, let's have a look. Here they are. I'm gonna let them sit here for five minutes. Uh, let them cool down a little bit before I try to um, turn them out. I said it's a prayer. The blue one looked super blue when it went in. Um, but it lost a bit of its color. One, two, three. And that's other cakes. They all look nice and even. While my cakes are cooling, I'm gonna get on to make the buttercream. I've got, again, some room temperature butter. So I'm just gonna add that straight into the bowl. And using my paddle attachment, I'm gonna cream it. It's nice and pale now. It's very warm in my kitchen today, so maybe it's a little bit softer than I would like. Now I'm gonna start adding in my icing sugar in about four stages. I just wanna give the mixer a chance to actually really incorporate everything in together. Okay, so I finished covering all of my powdered sugar there. You can see how nice and soft my buttercream is. I wanna reserve about a cup of this buttercream because I'm gonna actually put some color into it as well. I'm gonna make a red. Uh, my buttercream is actually chilling in the fridge, so I'm gonna get on to working with my sponges. They're all now totally cooled. For the blue one, I'm actually gonna cut a ring from the middle, okay? With the rest of my sponges, I'm just gonna cut them in half. So I'm gonna separate out my halves very gently. I'm uh, calculating. My layers are gonna be red, white, red, white, red. Therefore, I'm just gonna put one of the red ones on top of the white. Use my ring cutter again, cut a circle. Okay, I think we can get started with the assembly. Take your first layer of your cake. And with this one, I'm gonna add in a little bit of jam. I love that tartness the raspberries are gonna bring. I'm gonna then put in a thin layer of my buttercream and I can go in with my white. I'm gonna go in now with another bit of buttercream. I'm gonna even it out with my spatula. Okay, I'm gonna go in with another layer of my red cake, a little bit of jam. And next I'm gonna put a few dollops of my buttercream as well. And again, I'm gonna spread it with my spatula. Okay, and then we can go in with our blue ring layer. Finally, I'm just gonna fill in the center, take my white and put in a very, very thin layer of buttercream. And let's top it up with my red. Now I'm just gonna cover the top and the outside with buttercream. This is just a crumb coat. I had to put my cake into the fridge to set it a bit because it's too warm today, it was getting a bit wobbly. So my crumb coat is now nice and hard. So I'm gonna quickly gonna put some extra buttercream on top and try to smooth everything out a little bit more and then we can decorate the top. It's as straight as I can get it. I'm just gonna clean off the edges a little bit now with some moist kitchen roll and then I'll put some extra decorations on top. Okay. That's my little rosettes. Uh, I think they bring in a nice pop of color. I'm gonna put some fruits as well. I have some strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. The strawberries are from my own garden. And that's it, that's my little cake. It wasn't without its challenges though. Um, it is very, very warm today. My butter was probably a bit softer than it should have been, so it didn't get as nice, nice a rise to my sponges as I wanted to. And also the consistency of the buttercream, I had to keep putting it back in the fridge because it was just kind of running everywhere. 
Having said all of that, I'm very pleased with the outcome. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. Nothing left to do but to cut into it. I have my fork ready, but I am so pleased with how that turned out. We can see all the different layers. We've got the red, white, red, white, and even our blue is showing up. I think this is absolutely perfect. Despite all of our hiccups, we have fantastic, fantastic results. Let's give it a try. It is so tasty. I can taste the vanilla. I can taste the buttercream. I can taste the delicious tartness from the raspberry jam and the fresh fruit. Oh, it is so, so good. A delicious summer treat. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you share, like, subscribe, and comment below what you thought of this recipe. Be sure to go over to Michael's channel afterwards as well and check out his recipe. Doing a collaboration with him has been so much fun, so I hope you guys enjoy it. With that, I'll leave you for this video and happy 4th of July!